New Year's Eve in Sydney is a spectacular event, one that is broadcast all over the globe. The fireworks around the Harbour Bridge and the Opera House are often the first images people all over the world see of the new year. But have you ever thought about how sustainable an event like this is? The city of Sydney, which has committed to achieving net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050, wanted to find this out and commissioned a carbon footprint study. They found that the 2015 New Year's Eve event, which includes a fireworks display, lighting effects and parade, and various events and serviced sites, resulted in 550 tons of carbon dioxide emissions. Just to put this into perspective, it would take over 5,000 trees around 30 years to offset these emissions. But what were the major sources of these emissions? You would intuitively think that direct consumption of electricity used for lighting the event, diesel generators and fireworks might be the biggest culprits. What the study found was perhaps surprising. Food and catering for the event was the largest contributor, as well as a range of other third-party services including printing, advertising, meat products, wine, beer, merchandise and so on. While much of the emissions from the consumption of these goods and services did not occur on New Year's Eve, and not even within the city of Sydney itself, it is important that we also consider these as part of the total carbon footprint. In fact, Studies have found that emissions from the consumption of goods and services can expand a city's carbon footprint two to three times over its direct emissions from driving cars or heating homes. This has important implications for the way we measure the sustainability of cities and the responses we take to make cities sustainable. Hi, my name is Tommy Wiedmann. I'm a professor of sustainability research at the School of Civil and Environmental Engineering at UNSW Sydney. The world has changed a lot since 1950, just after the United Nations were created. At that time, it was only 30% urban, with just 750 million people living in cities. Today, more than half of us live in cities, over 3.5 billion people. And by 2050, Two-thirds of all humanity, that is 6.5 billion people, will be urban. This means we will need to build a new city for 1 million people every week to keep up or manage the growth of the cities we already have. Cities are the powerhouses of economic growth, contributing over 80% of global gross domestic product and functioning as catalysts for inclusion and innovation. However, cities also account for about 70% of global energy consumption, greenhouse gas emissions and resource consumption. The environmental impact of cities extends far beyond their borders, driving global consumption and resource use and climate change. Sustainable development cannot be achieved without significantly transforming the way we build and manage our urban spaces. This means establishing cities that are inclusive, creating opportunities for employment and a better life for all city dwellers and providing affordable necessities such as housing, water, sanitation, healthcare, energy and transport. Safe and resilient in the face of shocks and stresses such as natural disasters and climate change impacts, health epidemics and economic crisis and environmentally sustainable by reducing consumption of natural resources and the production of waste and pollution, smart land use and transport planning, and ensuring that the overall environmental footprint of cities does not exceed planetary limits. The good news is that we can transform most existing cities to make them more sustainable. And we can also build new sustainable and resilient cities in Asia and Africa, where two-thirds of the future demand for buildings and infrastructure is still to be met. This could well turn the tide over the next 20 to 30 years, creating new economic opportunities and hundreds of millions of jobs that young people from these regions require. This aspirational process to transform the lives and livelihoods of 5 billion people who live in cities by 2030 lies at the very heart of the Sustainable Development Goal number 11. But what are the features of a good or sustainable city? We can explore this question by looking at some of the many global assessments that attempt to rank cities based on their livability and sustainability. 
According to the Economist Intelligence Unit, livability is the key to a good city. They assess and rank an individual's lifestyle or living conditions in 140 cities worldwide based on attributes such as stability, healthcare and environment, education and infrastructure. Australia's cities perform extremely well under this livability index, with three cities in the top 10. Melbourne is on second place, Sydney on third and Adelaide is on 10th place. This highlights that Australia's major cities are relatively safe with low crime rates, have good access to healthcare and education, are well serviced by infrastructure including transport, energy, water and communications, and have a vibrant culture for entertainment, sports and civil engagement. In other words, they are safe, inclusive, fun and highly livable. But what about environmental sustainability? Cities consume the bulk of global energy and resources with footprints that extend far beyond their boundaries, driving global climate change that will in turn undermine their livability and resilience. The Sustainable Cities Index, published by Arcadis, ranks 100 global cities on three pillars of sustainability – people, planet and profit. These stand for the social, environmental and economic dimensions of sustainability. Based on this index, the top performers are mostly established European metropolises, with London ranked as the world's most sustainable city in 2018, followed by Stockholm, Edinburgh, Singapore and Vienna. Sydney is the top-ranking Australian city, but comes in at only 34th place in the rankings. These top-performing cities tend to have high performance across the three pillars of a sustainable city, with high scores in areas such as the affordability of city life, access to public transport, income equality, employment, business infrastructure, low-carbon energy infrastructure, sustainable transport and significant green spaces. However, many global assessments fail to also consider environmental impacts associated with the massive consumption of resources in cities, which extend far beyond their boundaries. An important way to measure these is through the use of footprint metrics, for example for carbon, water and biodiversity. A global assessment of the carbon footprint of 13,000 cities found that carbon footprints are highly concentrated into a small number of dense, high-income cities and affluent suburbs. In fact, the top 100 cities drive 18% of global emissions and climate change. For these cities, most of their emissions are due to broader impacts from the consumption of goods and services rather than a city's direct emissions. Let's look again at the top-ranked sustainable city of London. Based on its carbon footprint per capita, it ranks very high at 16th out of 13,000 cities. Australian cities such as Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane also have large footprints, falling easily in the top 100 cities globally. Would you consider this sustainable? To avoid climate breakdown, emissions from global urban consumption must halve by 2030. For this to be achieved, emissions from consumption in high-income cities, such as Sydney, must decrease by two-thirds within the next decade. This will require considerable changes to the way we produce and use energy, our transport systems and built environment, but also in our behaviors and lifestyles towards more sustainable consumption patterns. It is clear from these examples that the concept of a sustainable city is complex and multifaceted. SDG 11 provides a roadmap towards more inclusive, sustainable and resilient cities by 2030. So, what can you do to increase the sustainability of your city and help achieve SDG 11? Some practical actions that you can take include Live car free, walk or ride your bike, or take public transport. Take one less flight, reduce the number of flights you take each year, and instead have a vacation in your local communities. Change your diet to reduce or remove meat and dairy consumption. Increase organics and compost your food waste. Reduce the number of new clothing items that you buy each year. As you can see, there are many ways in which you can contribute to make your city more sustainable.